Hi, I'm Catherine. Welcome back to my garden in Oxfordshire. This week I'm going to show you how I put my flowers together when I'm making bouquets for my customer. One tip is that if you're offering different sizes, it's a good idea to actually make them look different so people know that there is a differentiation between them. So although I'll repeat some colours and some flowers, I try and make them as different as possible. So it all starts with cutting. Um, I like to leave at least um, 12 hours for a good long soak in cool water in a shady place. Here I'm picking these ranunculus, which have been in my greenhouse, but now I've brought them out so they get a good amount of light. And as you can see, they've got nice long stems and I'm stripping the foliage as I go. Um, that's a good tip because it just saves you time when you're putting your flowers together. You might miss one or two leaves. You don't have to be too particular about it, but it's quite a good habit to get into. Plus the leaves will just go on the ground where they'll sort of rot down into the soil. So they're not going to do any harm there. And it just saves you another job at the end. Now I'm going into my cutting garden to see what I can pick there. I've got two small jam jar posies to do and one larger mixed bouquet. So I'm going to cut some, uh, I've got some dark red wallflowers, which are hard to see. I grow through this mesh because it helps to keep the stems tall and it does make it a little bit awkward when you're cutting shorter things. But um, on the whole, it's a good idea because you want long straight stems, uh, the longer the better really. So again, I'm stripping off the leaves and I'm putting them into cool fresh water. It's a good idea to keep your flower buckets as sterile as possible because any bacteria that gets in is going to shorten the length of your flower. Now I'm picking some Euphorbia oblongata which is a wonderful lime green foliage plant but you have to be careful because it exudes a sap that can be irritating especially if you get it on your skin in the sun and when you're stripping the leaves off it, some of the sap comes out as well. So again, if you're at all sensitive, you should wear gloves. I seem to be immune to it. I think because I've been using it for so long, so it doesn't really affect me. But because of the way that the sap comes out, you have to treat these in a slightly different way. I'll put them into water now, but then I'll take them over to the summer house and I'll show you what I do to um, condition these in a slightly different way. I have a kettle, an old kettle in my summer house and I'm just boiling up some water. I put the stems in a jam jar and then pour the boiling water over, keeping the heads away so the steam doesn't get to them too much. And what this does, it sears the ends and seems to shock them and then they stop exuding sap and they'll take up fresh water and hydrate properly. And you can do that with a lot of stems that seem a bit floppy. I'm now getting ready to make my bouquets and this is some of the other foliage that I already picked. I foraged for some of it and I'll go through and tell you what it is. Also important to have your yarn or wool raffia or what you're going to use ready beforehand because you'll be holding your flowers so it just makes it easier. I've picked up one of the ranunculus and now I'm adding in some blue alkanet and some cow parsley. These are both um, plants that grow wild here in the UK and I've conditioned those in the same way with the boiling water. As I say, if you've got more delicate, almost floppy things and you use that treatment on them, it's amazing. And you can even do it if something's already started to droop in the vase. It's always worth a try and it, it seems to shock the plant into taking up more fresh water and hydrating it so you get a more rigid stem. And the other thing that's important is that as I'm holding the bunch, I'm turning it round a little bit 
with each stem that I add and that way you get an even bouquet at the end. I don't stick exactly to that sometimes, I have an afterthought and put something else in. And the whole process I find is you're kind of editing as you go along. Um, if I was making a lot of bouquets, you do it in a more regimented fashion. So you have each type of plant in front of you and then you can make a lot of bouquets. I never make very many in one go, so I do it like this. And I, I really enjoy it. I enjoy the selection process. It's good to have the filler flower, which is what the cow parsley does. It gives you a sort of light airiness that makes everything sort of look more alive. And I like to use a lot of foliage, as well as the blue alkanet, which has got this, as I say, this lovely blue flower. It's also got really interesting big leaves. And that's another important thing, I think. You want to contrast the size of the different forms you're using. So the cow parsley is very delicate, but some of the foliage, like the young sycamore stems I'm using, has got a deeper and sort of darker, denser look to it. And that gives you a nice balance. So as you can see, I'm working round and moving it. I sometimes put it in my other hand as it gets bigger. And I'm trying not to use too many different things. I suppose I use about six or seven different types of flower in a bouquet, but I use quite a lot of each one. Occasionally I'll have a more prominent focal flower and I might only have a couple of those, but I can, I always blend in the color. I suppose that's my favorite thing about it is the use of color because um, I'm, I'm an artist as well. So we're getting towards the end here. There's, a, there's some of the sycamore I told you about. And I think I was looking at it and I think it needs something else that I haven't already got. So I went to have a look around the garden. Ellie the dog has got bored, so she's gone in. And I remembered I had these tulips that really picked up the same color. See, it's got the dark red that repeats the ranunculus, but it's also got a little bit of yellow on the edge of the petals, which is a lovely contrast. Also, they're very graceful and have a bit of a bend in them, which gives a lovely flowing feel to the bouquet. You couldn't do this with all flowers. Some of them need to be conditioned for several hours, but I've done this with tulips before and I've tested it out and it doesn't seem to affect the lifespan in a vase. Now that the book is finished, um, I tie either raffia or a bit of string around it. It's quite tricky sometimes doing this one-handed, but I've got better at it. And once I've got the first loop round, I usually find I can sort of hang it down and tie it. So that's my finished bouquet. And it's got a very loose naturalistic feel because that's what I like to do. And the customer I'm making it for particularly asked, it's for her mother who says she doesn't like getting the ones from Marks and Spencers because they're flown in from all over the world. And just to show you that I did use those wallflowers in with another little arrangement that I did with some bluebells and some cowslips and the Cerinthi that um, has been an ongoing story on my channel. You can go back and see how I grew that. So I hope you've enjoyed a little insight. I'm not a trained florist, but these are the tips and tricks that I like to use. So here are all the three bouquets that I made during this session. And I don't usually have very many to do in one time, so I can really take my time over it and enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and join me again soon in my garden.